That can only be solved through the parties negotiating. We need to resolve something very locally and have a, an, a, um, a grown-up approach to dialogue. And this policy of, you know, there are issues, disputes uh, in South China Sea, which need to be addressed by the sovereign states, which are directly concerned through, through negotiations and peaceful means. which advocates a peaceful neighborhood and this policy of you know there are issues or disputes uh, in South China Sea which need to be addressed by uh, the sovereign states which are directly concerned through, through negotiations and peaceful means. I think this is a good policy and only through this effort and this endeavor, we can uh, maintain peace and stability in the region. So I think uh, this, this approach of uh, you know, negotiations and uh, bilateral uh, communication to settle whatever issues exist is, is the right approach. So, so, uh, so China sees an issue with uh everyone is concerned about. But our position in Vanuatu is that uh, uh, the parties involved should uh, settle the problem by a diplomatic negotiation, bilateral negotiations. And so it's really up to the parties concerned to sort out a way out through, through diplomatic uh, negotiations. But I think actually, China can have, uh, can, China has a wonderful example. For example, before China and Vietnam had successfully solved the border issue, dispute issue, China also solved the 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 the, 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 the Beibu, Beibu, one, Beibu Gulf issue with Vietnam. Right, that time also China was is big, Vietnam was small. You know, those two countries successfully solved their issue. Actually, China can apply, you know, this is the same principle to, to, to South China Sea issue. I believe, personally, as I understand, when China and Vietnam, Vietnam sit down to solve their issue, you know, dispute, territorial disputes, you know, actually no international law of sea apply, right? Or even border issue, there's no such international law to solve border issue because the two countries were successful in shut down the issue. Right? Very, very, it's a good, very good case, right? Why we cannot apply the same principle to the South China Sea issue? I think talks are crucial, and that's where we have to be careful that, yes, we need to resolve something very locally and have a, an, a, um, a grown-up approach to dialogue. We've seen what's happening in the Middle East, for example, and many of us are anxious about that. And the, the huge influx of people coming out of that region, we just need to look at the Middle East to understand how hard it is once we go down a particular route to get back to normal life, to education, to proper services, let alone business or the economy. Because once we live in a non-peaceful environment, then everything starts to change, and that's not where we want to be. So I think in principle that's the right solution in the sense that the problems can, the sovereignty questions, who owns this territory, that can only be solved through the parties negotiating. I think the right solution is the right solution to solve the problem of China and China, and it's also a right choice. So the right solution is very important. The peace of China is not based on China and China, and it's not based on China and China, but it's based on China and China. 第二个就是需要通过双边的渠道和东盟的相关国家来进行协商谈判啊？为什么这么说呢？因为岛礁问题是吧？涉及到他的主权，涉及到当事方。如果别人你来参与的话，那使这个问题会更加的复杂化。